And hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. Today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the Holy Bible. Once again, I've already done part one. If you haven't seen that, go check out all the videos that I've done. It's in there. The Bible, Holy Bible Decoded. Um, you know, that was decoding basically, you know, the Hebrew and the Greek because those are the makeup of the Old and the New Testament and... You know, it's got a lot of gold nuggets in part number one. Well, this is going to be an extension of that. I'm going to be bringing some mainstream into this. We're going to be bringing into the Tree of Life, the Tree of Knowledge, the Dead Sea Scrolls. We're even going to be bringing in a show on Netflix called The Umbrella Academy. What does that have to do with the Bible? Well, I'm going to show you during this presentation. So if you're new to this, welcome. And I'll just say, you know, follow the breadcrumbs. It's like, this is like putting a puzzle together. We use multiple layers and combine them and kind of attach them all together. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so very much for your support. So here we go, folks. And again, just follow along if you're new. Okay. I use several layers and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about what these all mean. But nonetheless, the first layer which most basic decoders will use is numerology or some want to call it gematria. But either way, this is a starting point to decode reality. It gets a little watered down because you see folks, this is the website most people use. It's called gematria or it's Derek's website, but look at all, these are all different ciphers, numerology ciphers. Look how many there are. So it can get kind of confusing. You know, so my suggestion is to stick with a couple and work your way and create your foundation. Then we bring the outcomes of numerology and we can bring it into the string of pi, the never ending digits of pi, the perfect circle. If you're not using pi, I don't know why you're not using it because it is only one way to observe from it. There's not multiple. So looking at the Old and New Testament in the Bible, folks, starting off with this, okay, here it is, Old and New, those are the two words. And, you know, that's a total of 30. 16 plus 14 is 30. And when you bring that into the string of pi right here, which I'm using right here, this website right here, sabidium.com, you can type in any number and you can find out where it's located in the string of pi, up to like 2 million digits or something like that. But notice the number 30, which is the new and old together, it appears at the 64th decimal digit of pi, which is why behind here in the background, there's a chessboard. The black, this is the reason why the checkerboard or chessboard is used, the black and white duality. Some, think it's, some people think it's evil and it's Masonic. The Masons use it, yes, but that doesn't mean it's evil, folks. Because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with good and evil in this world. That's the makeup of our dualistic nature. So nonetheless, here it is. The Holy Bible is linked to the... That's why the Masons use the Bible, by the way. But it's, it's found at the 64th decimal digit of pi. Number 30 is. And, you know, there are 64 squares on a chessboard. There are 64 possible codons in our DNA. So it's tied to us as human beings, which is where the Bible's embedded, of course, because everything, folks, the game of life is fixed, it's rigged. You know, there's no way that I can prove that, of course, but the numbering outcomes that I keep getting keep showing that this software was written long before we got here. So it's like you're just playing out your part, I'm just playing out my part. You know, I mean, even in the Bible, when it says God knows what you need before you even ask him. Well, yeah, of course, because the game of life is fixed. And that's a no brainer. Anyway, here is the 30th card in the medicine cards. Let me just digress and show you that stack. Here it is. There's 52 of these cards matching the cards of illumination. They use animals instead of suits. And, you know, the 30th card, there it is. It's the rabbit card. Okay, so... The importance of the rabbit, of course, where did Alice go and follow the white rabbit down the rabbit hole into Wonderland? And folks, we're in Wonderland, in case you didn't know that. You probably already did. But we're in Wonderland. And that's where that story gets its merit from. 
So there it is. And then the Bible fits into that. It's just love and fear is what it is. So let's bring in another layer. Let's bring in the cards of illumination and the tarot. What do they have to say about everything? Well, remember new and old, the New Testament, Old Testament, 16 and 14. Well, the 16th card in the cards of illumination is the three of clubs. And the 14th card is the ace of clubs. And I have the number 13 here because you see the ace is the number one card in its lineage. Well, just let me digress and show you this again. See, so the ace is always the first card. So it's, it's actually the first card in every one of its suits. And then the last card is card 13, which is the king. Okay, even though these are measured up, 26 to every 13. But that's how these work. So the first card's the ace, the last card's the king in every suit. So you have the first card, the ace, the third card, the 13. That's where you get the number 13, which is why, folks, you go to a lot of these mainstream hotels, they'll skip the 13th floor. 13 is a very powerful number. It's the number of creation, by the way. And it's the number of death, because the 13th card in the tarot is the death card. So, of course, that stigma around 13 being a really evil number or a bad number, well, it means death, yeah, but it also means regeneration, because the two are tied together. Okay? And notice, you know, ace clubs, three clubs, when you say that in numerology, you get another number 64, which is 64 squares on the chessboard, which matches this right here, where pi comes into play. So you see how these just, they blow away just using numerology, because, you know, you can match up any numbers in numerology if you look hard enough. But when you add these layers that are not anything attributed to numerology, well, then it gets a little tricky. But notice how everything's all embedded into one another. What about the cross? The cross is a major symbol in Christianity, Catholicism, Protestantism, Baptism. I mean, it's on the Bible. And, you know, and it, I mean, look, folks, some religions think it's a bad pagan symbol. I mean, who's right? Well, I mean, if you know anything about how the matrix works, everybody's right. But really, it comes down to which one has more power. And, you know, I believe the cross can fit in so many different situations. But using a simple calculator or your cell phone, this is what the dial pad looks like. On your cell phone, here is the cross. It's right there. And, you know, then you bring in that other layer, which is really important, the alchemical layer, the alchemy, the blending of energies. And you'll notice, you know, I've placed each element in correspondence to the numbers on the cross here on the calculator or dial pad. Now at the bottom, folks, there is no element zero, which is what I, why I feel whenever you see a zero in numerology, you can multiply your total by three. Because that's what pi is. Pi is 3.14, but pi on the masculine side of the decimal, the three, that's what's most important because you can go on for infinity with the other numbers. So it's not just 3.14. That's just what we've come into uh, agreement on and what pi is, what, what it's referenced as. But pi really is three. That's what it is. And if you know anything about the number three, that's the trinity, the triangle. It goes by so many different things. But the three is extremely important. So I feel that, you know, if you get your outcomes, folks, with numerology and you find a zero in there, multiply your total by three. And then try getting some of your endings that way. But anyway, when you take the total outcome of all of these elements using the cross on the dial pad, you're going to add up oxygen, boron, helium, beryllium, and carbon, and then you're going to get your total and multiply it by three, which is pi. And the number you're going to get is 156, which is the 64th element. We just talked about the 64 right here, and we talked about the 64 right here. You see how it's all connected? Using all these different layers, by the way. And, you know, remember, all you got to do is take out the O, and there is the word God. And if you've been following my work on the number 64 and the 64th element, Let's go back to that. 
The 64th element, which is right here, has a television as its icon photograph. And when you go to the uses and properties, it'll tell you that it's used in television screens. As in television, television, pretty interesting to say the least. So I feel like this has a lot of merit, folks. Could this be the cross? I mean, people make it on their chest, over their chest, pray upon it, use it as a symbol around their neck. Is this what it really means? It's a very good possibility. Notice the number in the middle of the cross, the dead center, the number five. Now, I told you we'd be getting into mainstream, and, you know, I'm going to be bringing in a show on Netflix called The Umbrella Academy. If you haven't seen it yet, I'd highly suggest watching it. A lot of gold nuggets in there. The main character in that show is number five. And, then, you know, the very good reason why five is the only number that looks like a serpent, a snake. The five, if you make the shape of a five, looks like a snake. Look at the actual atomic mass of boron. It's most abundant. Not its average, but its most abundant. There's your 911 or 11.009. That's right in the dead center of that cross, folks. What about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Because, you know, many scholars and theologians and they all attribute the Dead Sea Scrolls to being a main factor in the actual Bible itself. You know, I, I studied them a little bit. I was going to decode them, but kind of got bored with it. But the big standout that I found was they were discovered between 1946 and 1947. And, you know, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge in, in the biblical sense, here it is, that's why I circled them. Here is the Hebrew spelling, the original spellings of life and knowledge because you have tree included in here, which would make it 80 and 81. But look at what the outcomes are, folks. 46 and 47. No coincidence there, of course, folks. See, this is what strengthens the story. Television. You have palladium and silver. And when you add those two together, just the masculine side, the 105 plus 106, you're going to get the number 200. And 11, which is the 47th prime number. And of course, 47 is Tetragrammaton, the ancient Israelite God of what? The Bible, the Old Testament. What about the alchemology of the word Bible? I've, I've kind of coined this. This is what I discovered this. I don't know if anybody has ever been using this before. But I discovered it, okay? That's all I can say. I was discovered this methodology where you take numerology and then you get your outcome and then you move it into alchemy or the elements. So Bible is 21235. That would be helium, hydrogen, helium, lithium, boron. That would be a direct match of the numerology of Bible. And then when you add up the atomic masses or weights using the trusty calculator, you're going to get the number 27.039. Now, why is that number important? And this is why alchemology works. This is the reason why alchemology is extremely accurate. You can do your own name, your full name, your first and middle name. I've shown it in Keanu Reeves. You haven't checked out my video on decoding John Wick. I've shown why they called him Neo in the movie The Matrix. Because his name ends up landing on Neodymium. But 27.039 is the outcome of the word Bible using alchemology. And why is that important? Because folks, you see, it's a direct match of how many books are in the Old and the New Testament. Notice the Old Testament has 39 books in it. 39. And the New Testament... As 27 27 and 39 and there it is folks the alchemology of the word Bible is 27.039 matching that of the total books of the Old Testament and the New Testament that's the power in alchemology folks so I know it works so then we bring in you know the actual specific elements now I mean I could take 
all 39 elements and add them up. I haven't done this yet. It's quite extensive amount of research to do, or at least work, tedious work, but adding up all 39 elements and adding up all 27 and getting a total. I'm sure there's some significance in there. Maybe one of you wants to do that, but nonetheless, there's the 39 books uh, of the Old Testament, and then there's the 27 books of the New Testament. Notice it's the element yttrium, which is the letter Y, which matches you know, a lot of things that like, let's see, the college Yale, where skull and bones comes from. Skull and bones equals 39, by the way, just like the word Microsoft. But anyway, you know, the Old Testament, folks, if you, if you know your theology, we know it's a book about a jealous God, an angry God, killing innocent people and sacrificing animals and doing all this stuff that no one today in their right mind would ever do. Now, I know times change, but I mean, the, the stories in that book were completely about fear based, which is what the Bible is. It's fear and love, because in the New Testament, the figure Jesus came into the picture and he was all about love and brotherhood and purity, treating others with love. So it was all about fear and love. And that is the yin yang. Because we have fear and we have love. We have both. It's a dualistic nature that we live in right now, folks. And that's what the Bible is, which keeps you hooked, keeps you stuck inside the dualistic nature. Cobalt's a really interesting element. If you go study the picture of it, 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 it actually means goblin and it has two dragons there. Notice the CO as its abbreviation, which means chaos and order order out of chaos you know what that means and you know remember the letter y is in the shape of what makes time travel possible the flux capacitor and back to the future 88 miles an hour marty mcfly had to get the delorean to time travel a lot of huge sinks with this element right here and of course you know when a snake sticks its tongue out of its mouth what's it in the shape of yeah the letter y we're told the serpent deceived us well, is that true? You know, it's a story. I wasn't there when it was written. What about when we take the numbers, the total books of each bio, of each testament, and we divide it? 27 divided by 39. Get out your calculators. You're going to get 0 0.69, which is why I have the picture of the yin-yang behind here. I mean, what are the odds, folks? There's 27 books in the new and 39 in the old. When you divide them into one another, you get 0 0.69, which matches the yin yang, the black, the black and white again. Again, what are the odds, folks? You see, so it doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is, is what's staring you in the face and what you give energy to. What matters really is your journey. It's an individualistic journey. That's what matters. Not what, it doesn't matter about me. You're not living through my eyes. I'm not living through yours. But these are really apparent, obviously, right here. I mean, this is pure math right here, folks. So then we get into the cards of illumination. I've already talked about the cards, but here they are matched up to the elements and the books of the Bible in total. The Old Testament having 39, that's Yttrium. The 39th card is the King of Diamonds. Diamonds is the water suit. The four classical fire, air, water, and earth. Well, diamonds is the water suit. And we're going to get into more of that in a minute. But it's the king of diamonds and the ace of diamonds. And, you know, when you look at a pyramid, the pyramids, the great pyramids, they're one half of a diamond. If you've watched my decode on the great pyramid of Giza and... The other two, you'll you'll know that Ace of Diamonds matches, I mean, the word Khufu is 27. That matches with the Ace of Diamonds. The Ace of Diamonds is tied directly into the Great Pyramid of Giza. So it's really fascinating. And then, of course, let's not forget Lucifer. You know, his alchemology is 58. So he's tied into Cobalt. The character Lucifer. What about the Tarot? Remember, the Cards of Illumination... Those, according to history, came into play first, and then the tarot was an offshoot, or I like to say a cousin of the Cards of Illumination. So, the King of Diamonds is the King of Pentacles, 
And of course, the Ace of Diamonds is the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles, I mean, this means new beginnings. That's what the hand is with the, the diamond here, the, the disc. And then the King of Pentacles, you know, he's the king of something. Depends on what your interpretation is of all that. But remember, water is emotions. Can be tied to cancer, the crab, the 69. So many different sinks that we could place these cards into. Now, you know, I again, these graphics I've already shown them. If you like the graphics that I've shown you in the earlier positions of this video, the tarot and the cards of illumination, just send me an email, decodereality at gmail, and I'll send them to you. I got them all numbered for you and uh, makes it easy to start utilizing this methodology. But there it is. And notice the King of Pentacles is the 77th card in the tarot deck. And using without the Fool, because some people like to include the Fool as a 22nd, but King of Pentacles is the 77th card. The Ace of Pentacles is the 64th card. There's that 64 again. And, you know, when we add up those numbers, and we're going to get to that, the 64 and the 77, we're going to get back to that in a minute. But let's bring in the string of pie, folks. Let's really break this down with the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament, again, has 39 books. 39 is the Yttrium. 88. And then when we go into the string of pie, we find the 39 because it's a compound number, meaning more than one. So it's a, it appears at the 43rd decimal digit, but it occupies the 43rd and 44th decimal digits of pi in the string of 3.1 all the way in. So when you take 43 and 44 and you add it up, you get the number 87. So remember that number. We're going to come back to that. What about the number 27, which is the New Testament? New Testament has 27 books. That's Cobalt. 27 appears at the 28th and 29th decimal digit of pi. There it is, occupying those two spaces. 28 plus 29 is 57. Well, I mean, they're, they, I mean it's 87 and 57. They both share the 7, but we're talking 5 and 8. And remember, they're 30, 57 minus 87 equals the number 30. And we talked about what the 30 is. It's the rabbit, which is tied to the number 64. So what about it when we add up these four numbers, that these elements that occupy in the digits of pi, which are linked to the Old and New Testament of the Bible? 43 and 44, 28 and 29. When we add those up, folks, we get the number 144. Now, if you know your Bible... 144,000 are the chosen ones. Would you be in that category, one of the chosen ones? It's a very small bracket to be in. Small bracket compared in comparison to almost 8 billion people. 144, big number. And what's fascinating about this, folks, is, see, this is a big catch-22, a big in-your-face kind of number, the 144. Because you see, folks, you know, I, I pointed this out in my decode of the coronavirus. I decoded the timeline just recently about, I don't know, about three weeks ago. If you haven't seen that one, please check it out. But, you know, the starting place supposedly of coronavirus was in Wuhan. And Wuhan's latitude, longitude, another uh, layer you can observe this matrix from is X marks the spot. It's, you know, 30 degrees north and 114 degrees east. And when you add up 30 plus 114, you're going to get the number what? 144. So, you know, I'm like, okay, well, let's look at the string of pi. Well, folks, here are the 144 digits past the three point in the string of pi. Look at the number you get when you add them all up. 666. The number of the beast. And yet, folks, it's tied to the number 144, which is tied to the Old and New Testament, which are supposedly the chosen ones. It's a big catch-22. Because this number is a holy number, and this one is the number of the beast. It's a big contrast, massive contrast. And yet they're tied together directly. Pi does not lie, folks. It tells you the truth. 
because there's only one way to observe it. Just one way. So what about the 144,000? Here it is, folks, just to show you a little bit more by why the game of life is fixed. The, the Bible is the greatest spell book ever written because that's why it's coming true, because more people have read it. And as they speak those words written down on those pages, they are literally casting spells and they're making it come true. It was already going to come true anyway because the game of life is fixed, but when people read it, they're going to make it come true. So when you read the Bible, you're actually contributing to making the prophecies come true. That's how it works, by the way. But nonetheless, look, look at it. Revel, this is one. This is the famous scripture talking about the 144,000. It's Revelation 7 verses 4. I mean, the word revelation equals the number 39, which is linked to the Old Testament. But anyway, 7-4, which is related to the element tungsten. Tungsten can also be called Wolfram. That's why it's got the abbreviation W there. And of course, the letter W is the 23rd letter, which is the word crown, which is the word blood, which is the word history. So who do you think owns that? Why they use that number? The number 23, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. All these characters being used and owned by the crown, that's who they work for. And, you know, tungsten, they used to put it in filaments in light bulbs. This little thing right here, they used to make this with tungsten. And what do light bulbs do? They illuminate. They light up. If it's dark and you turn the light bulb on, it lights the room up. Illumination. Remember, Jesus and Lucifer both equal the number 74. Just remember that. Perhaps the Latin... Or the Latins, you know, the, the Vatican, they chose the word Lucifer because that wasn't the original spelling of it to match that of Jesus so he would just rob the energy of the Jesus character. I don't know. It's a possibility. But nonetheless, I mean, we know Lucifer's the bad guy, Jesus is the good guy, good cop, bad cop, black and white, dualistic. We know that. We, that's, that's easy to understand now, which is just part of a battery, positive and negative, anode and cathode. Anyway, the original spelling of this scripture was in Greek, not English, not Hebrew. The Greeks wrote the New Testament. And here is 144,000 spelled out using the Greek system. It becomes 398. And when you go and bring that into the string of pi, 398 appears at the 2020 decimal digit of pi. What year are we in again, folks? Yeah, we're in 2020. We're, we're nearing the reset, folks. Because the game of life is fixed. It's, it's, that's why people say, oh, it's prophecy coming. Yeah, you're right, because it's fixed. It's fixed. You don't need to pray, because God already knows what you're going to pray for, because it's fixed. This God of this... Matrix. Could be Yaldabaoth, could be the Yodei Vai, they could be all the same one. I, I think that the Yod has the personalities of Lucifer and Jesus. Those, that, those are his two personalities. Like we have two personalities, we have an ego and a soul. Same thing, you know, we're made in the likeness of an image of the Elohim. I mean, it's a no-brainer right there. But anyway, 2020, folks, is tied to 144,000. Right there in the string of pie, 2020. So I know we're getting towards the end, folks, because of these numbers and how they appear. Let's go back to the Old and New Testament again, and let's bring in more elements to get another look. And we're getting towards the Umbrella Academy. This is going to be quite fun. But notice again, you know, this is, the number 39 is the Old Testament. It has the 43 and 44 occupying those two digits. That becomes number 87. And then the New Testament is 28 and 29 being 57. So 87 is Francium and 57 is Lanthanum, which is one of Lucifer's elements directly. Donald John Trump through alchemology equals 138, by the way. But when you take the numerology of Lanthanum and Francium, you get the number 64. Again, there's the 64. Now I'm bringing in real true science, folks, because, you know, as I said, man's being used. We're, we're, being, we're being used. At what level, I don't know. 
Now you see 64 possible codons in our DNA, 20, 20, 20 different amino acids. We're going to break those two numbers down. Here it is right here. There are the, you know, the elements from the amino acids. And, you know, this is where the Umbrella Academy, thank you very much, comes into play. This character right here, this guy, Carmichael, it's his name. We're gonna be, I'm going to break him down, but he's got a goldfish that talks, and he's got like a goldfish house on his head, fishbowl. It's just fascinating, man. These, these people that write these, this is based off a comic book. Are comic books divinely inspired? I think so. But anyway, folks, look at this. Here it is. Here's the 64, again, gadolinium used to make television screens television what vision do you believe folks and then here it is folks calcium if you haven't seen my video on decoding king nebuchadnezzar i showed what the statue was in the vision of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel broke down and the elements that it represented and the last one folks is clay a mixture of iron and clay and that would be calcium and that's what our bones are made of calcium notice the 39 there there it is 20 different amino acids calcium and when you take gadolinoleum and you add up calcium with it you're gonna get the number 196 that is gold which is why then you get into the terminology turning lead into gold because see folks we're energetic food that's it. We are, we are being used for food, our energy, our emotions. That's how this works. That's how this game works. Notice the word gold is 17, just like the word fish, which is why I got this guy here, Carmichael. His name equals 28, Lucifer. But anyway, the goldfish. Folks, we're fish. We're fish being fished out of the sea of space. We live in a sea of space. We breathe in oxygen, which has precipitation in it. Water, H2O. Hydrogen and oxygen. We don't live in the water like a fish does, but we live in the sea of space. And that's what this whole story is based around. And that's what this show is all about, folks. If you haven't seen this show, I'd highly suggest checking it out. It's got so many gold nuggets in it. So many gold nuggets. It's quite entertaining as well. It's funny. It's really well done. You know, and the main character is number five, this guy. He's the only one that can time travel. Most powerful. He can time travel. Number five, the slippery one. And I, I've, I showed this slide, but I wanted to break it down. In my own words here, you know, and this is where I got this goldfish from. I got, I was watching Umbrella Academy and, I'm, and it hit me when I'm watching it. I'm like, oh my Lord. Goldfish is a double 17. You know, and if, you've, if you know anything of Alistair Crowley, I mean, his work, he said, we're all stars. That's true. The star card is the 17th card. It's the Aquarius card. We're in the age of Aquarius right now. That's why I know we're getting towards the reset. Change is coming. The goldfish, here's the actual scientific name for it. And when you break that down using, uh, using numerology, you get the number 46. It's actually a double 23, a double crown number, double 10 of clubs number. But that's a match of Jesus Lucifer. That's also a 46. And you know, that's why in the Bible, if you know your theology, Jesus was a fisherman of men. Cast out your nets to the apostles. Catch yourself some fish. Yeah. Fishing for us. I mean, notice that, you know, Revelation 12, verses 7, talks about Michael, which is Jesus, and the dragon, and fighting. And, you know, both of those in numerology equal the number 22. Which kind of strengthens that story. And, you know, the interesting part about the 22 is the word aquarium, which is 
The goldfish is one of the most commonly kept aquarium fish. Aquari We're in an aquarium. We live in a sea of space called an aquarium. You know what an aquarium looks like? You got fish in there and, you know, you feed them, put little fish feed on top. You ever had a fish tank? What do you think we live in, folks? We live in a big fish bowl. And we're all stars. We're all little fish. That's why Jesus was a fisherman of men. It's a no-brainer when you read the stuff and you really put two and two together. It makes it so easy to understand or understand. So easy. Let's go back to the cards. We're almost finished with this presentation. Thanks for sticking with me. Ace and king. Those are the two cards that make up every suit. Every suit has an ace and a king. This is the first card. This is the last card, the 13. One and 13. Now remember, the Old Testament is the King of Diamonds. The New Testament is the Ace of Diamonds. Yttrium and Cobalt. Notice that Ace and King is the 911. There it is, the 911. I mean, you know, folks, come on. Who decided? Who's the person or people that chose the numbers 911 to press for emergencies? And why those two numbers? Well, I mean, it makes sense when you look at these cards. These make up the ending and beginning. This would be the begin. Uh, this would be the um, beginning. This would be the end. This would be the beginning. This would be the end. It's just. It just. It doesn't matter which way you observe it. They're connected. And the reset somewhere in the middle, and it goes on and on. Black Sabbath said, "Agree." It goes on and on. It's heaven and hell. It's what it is. But notice they're a diamond suit. Why diamonds? Why do the Old and New Testament, why are they linked up to diamonds? Well, remember, folks, diamonds is the water suit. How about, you know, Lucy in the sky? The Beatles had this song, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I mean, Lucy's 61, that's Prometheum, the Greek god who stole fire and gave it to the humans. Does the fire represent knowledge? Is that story partly true? Diamonds is gold, 79. But the big standout, folks, to me is this right here, 311. Now, if you know the numbers, numerology, if you know what the numbers mean, you know, the 11 is magic. The number 11 is alternating current. It's electricity. That's what it is. It's tied to Jesus, the justice card. It's electricity. So whenever you see an 11, automatically you know it's, it's electricity, Elohim. Electricity, magnetism, electricity, dielectricity, electricity. And then you have the number three there. So it's electricity giving its energy to the number three. What does the number three mean? The number three is your lower mind, your intuition, your Mars energy, masculine. In the house of astrology, the third house represents the house of communication. Using your mind, your lower mind, your intuition. So this right here, loosing the sky, it's, it's giving electricity to your intuition. Your second brain, that's why your digestion should be in tip-top shape because if your digestion sucks, your brain's going to be foggy and you won't be able to use your pineal gland correctly. But anyway, 311, why is that? Folks, here it is right here. The king is the 13th card in every suit. I mean, it's the 39th card, but it's the 13th card. And the first card is the ace. There's your 311 right there, folks. Right there. It's right there. 311. And there it is. 311. Now, folks, look this behind this, these cards and whatnot. Look at what I have a picture of here, folks. It's really easy when you look at nature. So easy to see how this stuff works. What are the two dominant colors in nature? Just look at that picture. What are the two dominant colors? Blue and green. Those are the two dominant colors in nature. I mean, yeah, sure, you got white here, but blue and green are the two dominant colors in nature. When it's, when it's a perfectly non-cloudy day, it's blue and green, okay? Those are the two dominant colors. And then when you bring that into the, um, let me just jump ahead. When you bring that into the chakras, there it is right there, folks. It's father, son. 
its throat and heart. You see, you know, what you fall in love with, you're going to speak. This is where you do all your manifestations, by the way. You know, in Genesis 1, 1, it says the word was God. God was the word. Well, how, how, do, you, how do you speak words? You got to use your throat chakra. Ruled by Saturn, the fifth planet. And, you know, here it is right here, folks. It's 54. It's 54. It's blue and green. It's nature. When you look outside, it's Kronos and Zeus. Blue and green. And the element 54 is Xenon. Xenon's abbreviation is XE, but there is the X chromosome. The male. The chromosome. And then there's the Y, as in yttrium. And when you take these two elements, you add them up together, 54 plus 90, 39, you're going to get 93. Saturn, which is father, father time. Kronos, father time. And then if you add up 131 and 88, you're going to get 220, which is radon 86 which is a byproduct of radium which is raw lucy in the sky with diamonds so let's go back here and do one more look of the tarot and the cards of illumination as i said you know the ace of pentacles and the king of pentacles it's card 64 and 77 which is a match of the ace of diamonds and the king of diamonds when you take 77 and you add 64, you're going to get the number 141. And that is pi, folks, right there. Because pi is 3.141. That's where the Bible fits. Right after the masculine three point. Now, if you go and study some of the other pi stuff, you know, like Jane 108. If you want to go look up his stuff, J-A-I-N. He claims that pi, the original or the real Measurements of pi is 3.144, not 141. Puts a big another twist on things. Notice also too, folks, that the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament is 27 and 39. Here it is, 2739 equals the number 78. That's a match of king diamonds, ace diamonds. They both equal the number 78. And then when you bring in the string of pi, well, the number 78 appears at the 66 decimal digit of pi. Really interesting because how many books are there in the Bible? 66. 27 plus 39 is 66. So you see how, folks, numerology and the cards of illumination and alchemy and the tarot, they will strengthen the story of what we're told and how this stuff works. And then it's up to you to make the decision on what you want to believe. Not up to me. I'm presenting you possibilities. I'm not saying any of this stuff's true. It's my truth, but possibilities, folks. Here's another little one here. Here's again Carmichael, the Umbrella Academy. He was a talking goldfish. He was the chief authority in charge of the Temps Alternalis. The numerology of Temps Alternalis equals the number 54. He was in charge. And that's the X chromosome, folks. That's father, son. That's this right here. Five, four. I mean, you can't miss it, folks. You can't miss this stuff when you look at it. And observe it. See it for what it really is. So these are my last slide, folks. And that is when you take the number 54, which is Xenon, and you give its mirror, which is Rhodium, which is the number 45, and you take those and add them up, you're going to get 234.81 and when you say out 234.81 you're going to get the number 96 there's another yin yang another one i mean these are father son 
right here. There, that's what it is. Five is blue, four is green. And you know, I put this here. I don't know, does this have any significance to that? The RH blood. Rhodium, the rosy cross tied to the Rosicrucians. So sorry for the jumping around a little bit, folks. I think I was a little bit out of order. But what is it that you saw during this presentation, folks? I went over a lot of information. A lot. But it's clear to see we're fish. Being fished out of the sea of space. And does that mean it's all about illuminating ourselves? And the chosen ones, are we going to be part of that based upon how good we are? Is it based upon, based upon karma? That's why it's, you know, folks... To me, it's real simple, you know, to, to, to really be so basic on this. Just be a good person. Give to others. Don't be so selfish. Keep yourself clean. Treat your body like a temple. And know that man's the virus. And the great beast, 666, it's, it's man. It's us. It's us. That's what it's all about, folks. But man's being used. Make no mistake about it we are being used for sure at what level i just don't know that's all i got for today my name is logan this is decode your reality thank you so very much for watching